John chapter 10 is the shepherd's point of view about the sheep. Psalm 23 is the sheep's point of view about the shepherd. So John chapter 10, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So basically, uh, Jesus is telling these scribes and Pharisees, they are the thieves and robbers. They're trying to lead the sheep. Uh, the sheep in this chapter are true Christians. True, Bible-believing Christians. That's who the sheep are. Verse 2. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So, Jesus is the shepherd. And he's the one that does enter into the door to get to the sheep. So he is the shepherd of the sheep. And he's going to explain how. Verse 3. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own, calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. <clears throat> now the porter here is probably God the Father. And God the Father, obviously, uh only allows the one who would qualify to be the shepherd to enter into the door to get into the sheep, to be the leader of the sheep. And that is obviously the Lord Jesus Christ. The porter here is probably God the Father. And it says, the sheep hear his voice. So every true Bible-believing Christian does, not with their physical ears, but with their spiritual ears, hears the voice of Jesus. <clears throat> and we hear his voice through the word, God's word speaks to us as we read it, and obviously, uh, if we're reading it, it doesn't speak to us audibly with our ears. Uh, that's why in Revelation, when Jesus is speaking to the churches, he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So this is, this is not talking about physically hearing a voice. This is spiritually inside of us, our spirit hearing the voice of Jesus. And he says, he calleth his own sheep by name. Jesus knows who are his true sheep, his believers. And he, he knows our names. And he leads us out to pasture. Verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. So spiritually... Jesus' sheep, the true Bible-believing Christians, know his true voice. They know what is true, and they follow the truth. Verse 5, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. A true Bible-believing Christian cannot get deceived by false prophets. Realize that. Uh, there are people that were raised in Baptist churches, and they knew the truth, but obviously they were not really part of Jesus' sheep. Because, say, they meet a Catholic online, and they go and marry the Catholic and go to their religion. Or they meet a Mormon online, and so they change to be a Mormon. Obviously, they're listening to, to a strange voice. They are not listening to Jesus' voice because Jesus is never going to lead a true believer to the pagan Catholic Church because they don't teach true doctrines. They teach false doctrines. They worship idols. They uh, pray to dead people. They confess their sins to the priest. They think the priest is going to intercede for them. They worship the Pope. They think they have to be a Catholic in order to go to heaven. <clears throat> so obviously, Jesus' true sheep is not going to listen to that. And Jesus' true sheep is not going to listen to uh, the false doctrine that Jesus and Satan are brothers, as the Mormon church teaches. 
Verse 6. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. So the scribes and Pharisees, they didn't understand it. Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. So not only does Jesus enter the door as a picture of the only true shepherd, but he says he is the door. Now he's talking about uh, salvation here, that he is the door. Verse 8, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Uh, true believers in Jesus Christ are not going to listen to false teachers. They are not going to listen to false prophets because they know the truth. You have to know the truth in order to become a sheep anyway. So once you know the truth, you're not going to go for anything false. Verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And so Jesus, if, if we had a room that was full of doors and above every door was a different name, so above one door was Allah, above not one other door was the name Jehovah, and above one door was the name Jesus. Well, the only one that's going to bring salvation is the door that is uh, for Jesus. Amen. Okay. And he says, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Hey, here this verse is teaching eternal security. If you enter that door, this is not talking about if you enter that door after you die. No. This is talking about having faith in Jesus and believing in him and entering that door when you believe. And it says, if you do, he says, you shall be saved. And that is a promise. And if you if you shall be saved, that does not mean that you'll be unsaved again. A true Christian, a true Bible-believing Christian, cannot ever become unsaved. And they will follow Jesus. And it says they shall go in and out and find pasture. So they will be nourished by Jesus. He's going to lead them out and feed them. Verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So Jesus is talking about eternal life here. Eternal life takes place when we believe with all of our hearts. Then we get eternal life. And there's other scriptures, uh, I think uh, John 5, 24, uh, Jesus says half eternal life. So half is present tense. So when you believe God, when you believe with all your heart, God gives his true believers eternal life. At that point, you know, there's not one verse that says God takes it back. Not one. So this, uh, a life more abundantly is eternal life in our lives while we're still alive. That's the abundant life. And the thief who comes to kill and steal and destroy, uh, that's false prophets. They do not, they do not uh, save any souls. They just keep souls deceived. That's who these thieves are. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And obviously, you know, that's when Jesus died on the cross. Verse 12, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. So in other words, any kind of a false prophet does not care for the sheep. Jesus teaches truth and exposes who the wolves are. And anyone that really cares for the sheep is going to expose who the, who the wolves are because they care for the sheep. And verse 13, the, hiring, the hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. 
Uh, what is it saying? Uh, the hireling really doesn't care for the sheep. He's in it for the money. Jesus is not in it for the money. Jesus is the true shepherd. He's the good shepherd. Uh, he, he is the one who Psalm 23 is referring to when it says the Lord is my shepherd. That's the sheep talking. But Jesus here, he says he is the good shepherd and know my sheep. Jesus knows every true believer. Well, doesn't Jesus know everybody? <clears throat> not in this sense. Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, when Jesus is talking about Judgment Day, and the fake Christians are being judged because they call him Lord, they talk about all the works they did in his name, but he says, I never knew you. That means they were not his sheep. And why were those people not his sheep? He calls them workers of iniquity. In other words, they never repented of their sins, although they said they believed in him. So if a person does not repent of his sins, they are not true believers. Verse 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Uh so he said, as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. How do they know each other? Because they're both God. Two persons, one God. Jesus is God. The Father is God. And yes, they know each other. You know, they look at Jesus. Jesus is talking to these scribes and Pharisees, realize. And so he's telling them, I know the Father. That's what he's saying. And the Father, I know God the Father, and God the Father knows me. But does he know you? He's trying to say there. On John chapter 10 and verse 16, and this is talking about, this is the shepherd's point of view of the sheep. The sheep are true Bible-believing Christians. Psalm 23 is the sheep's point of view of the shepherd, which is Jesus. Jesus is the shepherd. But here it's talking about the shepherd's point of view. All right, and so, verse 16, Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So, here, Jesus is talking to the Jewish people. Obviously, that's who he came to first, was the Jews. And so, that was the present fold he was talking about, the present group. And when he said, uh, other sheep I have which are not in this fold, he's talking about going to when, when uh, the gospel is spread to the Gentiles. And then he's saying there'll be one fold. Yeah, uh, you know, after Jesus died on the cross, well, even before that, I mean, there was the Samaritans that got saved. <clears throat> and uh, the woman at the well, you know, she got saved. And so uh, in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter if it's Jew or Gentile, all are Christians. And so that's what he is saying here. Thou shalt be one fold and one shepherd. Verse 17. Therefore doth my father love me, because I laid down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. So, uh... In God's point of view of things, no one killed Jesus. Although the Jews set him up and gave him to the Romans to be crucified, Jesus could have called 10,000 angels, right, to set him free. So obviously Jesus let them crucify him. So he laid down his life, and he has power to take it again. Why does he has power to take it, to take it again means... He has power to raise himself from the dead. Why? Because he's God the Son. That's why. And that is that was the commandment he received of his Father. That was the, pl the plan for Jesus from the beginning of time. Verse 19. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. So he's, he's talking to these Jewish leaders. 
at the at the end of chapter 19, Jesus said basically, you know, you got eyes, but you can't see because they're blind. They say, oh, you know, are we blind also? They said. So Jesus was basically saying, if you had spiritual sight, you wouldn't be blind. So he's talking to these Jewish leaders here. So when he is talking about the thieves that are trying to deceive the sheep, he's talking about those people, those Jewish leaders, which, you know, we can refer to many people today as being false prophets. And verse 20. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? And mad here is talking about being crazy. He's crazy. He has a devil. And realize this is Jesus who they're talking about. This is the religious leaders saying, Jesus, God the Son, has a devil. And he's crazy. Why? Because Jesus is exposing them for being false. So this is their attack back at him. Now, in verse 21, others said, this is the other people, the normal people that were standing around, not the Jewish leaders, but just uh, uh, regular people, regular Jewish people. And so they are giving him honest opinion is what they're giving here of Jesus. Others said, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Oh, so God is using now the regular people as a witness against the Jewish leaders. Because a devil cannot open the eyes of the blind. Truly. Verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of the Dedication, and it was winter. And so it's just telling the time period of this, the Feast of the Dedication was uh, when the temple was dedicated long ago and they had this celebration every year. Verse 23, And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. And, you know, this is talking about King Solomon, the same uh, one who had built the temple before. And obviously Solomon's temple was destroyed. And so when they rebuilt the temple after the captivity, you know, they renamed the uh, entrance of that, you know, Solomon's porch. 24, Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, these Jewish leaders didn't really want to know. They're trying to set him up. That's why they gathered all around him. And they're trying to get him to say, Okay, I am Christ. Then they're going to say, Blasphemy! Stone him! So they're not looking for an honest answer here. And in uh, 25, Jesus answered them, as we're going to see later on, they're not looking, they're just waiting to catch something from him in order to blame him. So uh, verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. So he's still talking to these Jewish leaders, and he said, the evidence that I am of God is exactly what these people said. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? No. But in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, it talks about uh, basically when the Messiah comes, he's going to heal the blind and heal the lame. All right, so that is, that is what Jesus is talking about here when he says the works that he, that he does in his Father's name. What was prophesied in the Old Testament that Jesus would be doing? The Old Testament bore witness also against the Jews because they, the scripture says that they fulfilled all the prophecies of the Old Testament with, with all the things they did to Jesus, especially in crucifying him. They fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies, which they were supposed to know. But Jesus says they are not of his sheep. Why were they not his sheep? Because they believed not. Look at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I love this verse. I love this verse a lot. Uh, Jesus is saying here that true Bible-believing Christians 
hear Jesus' voice, and, and obviously this is talking about spiritually, not audibly, but spiritually inside, they hear Jesus' voice, and Jesus knows them. In Matthew chapter 7, when the fake Christians are getting judged, judged, Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That's unrepentant sinners who claim to believe in Jesus. He says, depart from me, I never knew you. But Jesus says he knows his sheep. His sheep are the true Bible-believing Christians. And uh, realize this. Uh, a person doesn't become a sheep until he believes. When a person believes with all of his heart, then he becomes one of Jesus' sheep. You could say, uh, instead of sheep here, you could say, true Bible-believing Christian. So Jesus is saying, my true Bible-believing Christian, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So a true Bible-believing Christian follows Jesus. Realize there is no room here whatsoever for the false doctrine of Christians can backslide. If a Christian can backslide, then they're no longer following Jesus, are they? But Jesus says his sheep hear his voice, he knows them, and they follow him. How long do they follow him? All their life they follow him. So there's no room here for backsliding. There is no room here for the false teaching of losing your salvation. If a person backslides or turns from the faith, obviously they were not a true Bible-believing Christian. They were not a sheep. They were not one of Jesus' sheep. Because it says Jesus' sheep hears his voice. They know him and they follow him. And realize that's the front door. The back door is Jesus said that in... Uh, Verse 5, we'll go back to verse 5, and a stranger will they not follow. There's the back door. Front door is they only listen to Jesus. So there's no room at all for these false doctrines that people dream up. Uh, the verses that they use to show that Christians can backslide, those verses are taken out of context, like Hebrews 6, like Hebrews 10, when it talks about uh, willful sinning. That's all talking about turning from the faith, but that's those who are still learning the Bible, still learning about Christ, and then they come to the point when they say, this really isn't for me. And then so then they turn from the faith. Uh, a true Bible-believing Christian continues on because they want that. They want it. They want God. They... Uh, believe in Jesus Christ with all their heart. They're willing, they're willing to forsake their whole life because of Jesus Christ. And so those are the ones that continue to a whole heart, wholehearted belief. That's when God's Spirit comes into them and seals them. That's when they become Jesus' sheep. Before that time, many, many people before this time, they prayed a sinner's prayer. I know many people that have prayed a sinner's prayer but turned from the faith. Never repent of their sins. Well, they weren't Jesus' true sheep. Those that become his sheep, they follow him. Nothing will turn them away from Jesus Christ. Now, they might stumble. Like I always say, they might stumble. But they're going to get back up. They're going to brush themselves off. And they're going to keep following him. They might get detoured a little to the right hand or the left a little bit. But because they have the Spirit of God, it's going to straighten them back out and get them back on path again. And so they're continuing to follow Jesus. Now, what does Jesus promise his sheep? Verse 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Even though we have these clear verses in the Bible, there are still people that take other verses out of context, and try to say a Christian can lose his salvation. Realize this. What they are doing is, the people that do that, they are taking verses that have to be interpreted, 
And they will put that as their foundation verses of their belief. And then they'll take a clear verse like this and try to fit it in to their interpretation. What we need to do is, if we want to know truly what the Bible is teaching, we need to take clear verses first and put them for the foundation of our beliefs. The different doctrines that we believe, the clear verses need to be the foundation, the foundational verses. And then you can take the verses that are really not that clear and interpret them through the clear verses. And I'm talking about all these doctrines that the King James Bible teaches, whether it is eternal security, whether it is the deity of Jesus Christ, whether it is the blood of Jesus Christ, all of these doctrines, there are many doctrines that uh, we need to have as our foundational teachings. See, that's because many churches go with other versions of the Bible. That's why a lot of churches are not solid on doctrines. But still, there are people that use the King James Bible that take verses out of context, verses that are not clear, that have to be interpreted, and so they interpret them through, uh, through something they believe or something they were taught instead of interpreting them through the clear verses. Look at verse 28 again. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. What does that mean? That means a true Bible-believing Christian will follow Jesus all of his life. He will never turn from the faith. He will never go back to his sin. And Jesus, when they believe, gives them eternal life, and they shall never perish. These verses here are teaching the eternal security of the true believer. In other words, once saved, always saved. If a person is truly saved... They are always saved. Jesus says, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Oh, but they can jump out of his hand. Uh, no, Jesus' sheep follow him. They're going to stay in his hand. If a person jumps out of his hand, then that means they were not a true believer. And the reason I say this is because I know, I know all of the excuses that these kind of people give. So that's why I say this. 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So, you have Jesus' hand, a believer in there, Jesus' hand, a God's father's hand. Uh, that's pretty secure, if you ask me. Verse 30, Jesus says, I and my father are one. So, here, what is Jesus saying? He's saying that he's God. When he says this, and the Jews know exactly what he's saying, because look at their response. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Hey, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to take rocks and smash him because he's saying he's God. He's saying he's God the Son. Verse 32, Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So Jesus is saying, look, I, I healed the blind, I, did, I healed the lame, I did all these things. And so what are you stoning me for? What do you, why do you want to stone me? Verse 33, the Jews answered him, saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. So what is the Jews' interpretation here? of what Jesus said in verse 30. That he's God. When Jesus said, I and my Father are one, the Jews wanted to stone him because he's saying he's God. And he's only a man. See, a person cannot be saved unless they believe Jesus is God. Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said ye are God's, so you notice this is a small g God. And the Jews wanted to stone him because Jesus said he's a capital G God. 
All right? But Jesus said even people are called gods, small g God. In other words, that's leaders. If you look in the Old Testament, the Jews, Jewish leaders uh, were called small g gods. And this doesn't mean false gods. It just means in a leadership position. Verse 35, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him, who the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God? He's saying, why is it such a big thing? Even your, your leaders are called small g gods, so why would you say it's impossible uh, that God would send God the Son into the world? Verse 37. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. Hey, all the works that I've done fulfill Old Testament prophecy for you to know I'm your Messiah. But if, if I don't do those things, then don't believe me. But if I am fulfilling Old Testament prophecy, you better believe me. Verse 38. But if I do, though ye believe not me, Believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. He said, hey, even if you don't, uh, if it's hard for you to, to believe what I'm saying, look at the Old Testament scripture that backs me up by what I'm doing, by the miracles that I do, and by the prophecy being fulfilled in the Old Testament, you should believe me because of that. And if you believe me because of that, then you'll believe what I'm saying. Verse 39. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. So they, they were trying again to kill him, but Jesus escaped. Verse 40. And went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. So Jesus escaped. He went back to the River Jordan where John, uh, before John was killed, was baptized, or uh, was baptizing people. And then 41, and many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. So in other words, here is another evidence right here. John didn't do any miracles. John told people to repent, and he baptized, and that's all John did. But everything John said of Jesus was true. What did John say of Jesus? John said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John said, I am not worthy to unloose his shoes. This is God the Son, John was saying. So everything that John said of Jesus was true. And the Jews didn't believe that either. So not only did the Jews, these Jewish leaders, have the Old Testament to prove who Jesus was, there was John the Baptist who preached about Jesus also that said this was him. And then when Jesus came, he did all the things the Old Testament said he would do. And because of this, look at verse 40, 42. And many believed on him there. So the Jewish leaders didn't believe on him. But many of the people that were around about listening believed on him. You know, a lot of times, you know, when we go out street preaching, holding signs or whatever, we might get mocked by many people. But there's going to be someone here and someone there that does believe, that's going to believe, that's going to provoke their thought to maybe investigate it further so that they will believe later on. You never know who we stir up. So this is John chapter 10 about the shepherd, about Jesus, the good shepherd, from the shepherd's point of view, and the Jewish leaders rejected the shepherd. And the Jewish leaders were the thieves and the robbers back then. Today, there's a lot of TV evangelists that are thieves and robbers, you know, and basically this is in the Christian realm here. This is talking about in Christianity itself. 
In Christianity itself, there's a lot of thieves and robbers. Hey, the popes are thieves and robbers. The priests are thieves and robbers because they try to tell uh, the people that you earn your way to heaven. you got to be a good Catholic. you got to be in the Catholic Church. And you have to obey what the church teaches to go to heaven. That's the staunch Catholics. Obviously, uh, in recent years, the Pope has been teaching a one-world religion. In other words, basically, God's going to accept everybody. And that's what all these false prophets today teach. God will accept anybody. And so they are thieves and robbers. Uh, they're saying there's others, other ways to get to God besides God the Son. They are false prophets. They are liars. They are leading people to hell. Praise God for the King James Bible, Amen. which has the truth.